Big Al's Rant with Caden McFarland, powered by Jack C. Ford. And hello, my friends, with Caden McFarland, Al Jerkins with the rant. And I, want, I don't want to start the uh, rant out on a downer, but I must because uh, we have just learned breaking news that Arnold Palmer has passed yeah. away at the age of, say, 87. We'll talk about that. Or if you want to comment, Aaron is here with us uh, to come out about Arnold Palmer. He's been to Tulsa several times in his career playing at Southern Hills and I was being just, honored at Southern Hills. Just looking at some of the old video and you can't believe how big the galleries were. Oh, uh, I mean, it's certainly, I mean, everybody's writing this now. The guy who did more to popularize that sport than anybody. You uh, bet. People loved you bet. Arnie. Arnie's Army. Yeah, right? 87. All right. Uh, also, uh, we lost a pitcher in the major leagues, one of the best in uh, Jose Fernandez, who was who passed away along with two others in a boating accident over the weekend. So, uh, kind of a shaky it's beginning been a crazy to this weekend day, in no sports, doubt. right? No doubt. All right, let's get uh, to the games at hand. Uh, we want to talk about OSU's game down in Baylor. Uh, Mike Gundy after the game, not happy. Was, was about well, um, you know. Along with, you know, several other reporters, I was in the post game, mm -hmm. uh, like from me to you. Is that him. why he was so angry? Were yeah, you asking irritating questions, no, Big Al? Actually, I was not. Oh, okay. But there was a fan at the end of the game that irritated Mike Gundy <laughs> to know. And I, I, don't, I cannot believe that Mike Gundy didn't react to him. That's how powerful he was and how upset he was. He just wanted to get off yeah. the field. That's at the he very end cool. of our video. We you, have time. You we'll show that, you what we're yeah, talking the about. The fella yelling at Gundy. But anyway. Um, yeah, people, well, I mean, what do you make of it? I, I was I, I just thought, telling you, I mean, a golden opportunity squandered, but I right. actually feel a little bit better about this team I, after last night than I did before. I mean, I think they I, did a lot I of thought, good things. I thought the game plan was absolutely perfect for the scenario that they were in. Great. They didn't get impatient with the running game. Nope. They kept going on the ground. All of their touchdowns were rushing touchdowns, uh, which was a little strange. But you see a couple of fumbles, a couple of miscues after the game. Mike Gundy said, if it were not for six to eight plays, we win this game. Uh, but unfortunately, those six and eight plays count. Yes, and look, you could say that about most college football games, especially conference games. Hey, these five or six plays, they go differently. Maybe we win. Um, I was struck by how angry he was, though. Uh, it, 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 they clearly felt like they had game planned their butts off, that Baylor right. was right for mad. the upset. That's why he's they, mad. Hey, look, Mason was on his game. It wasn't the Central Michigan Mason Rudolph. This was big game Mason Rudolph. If you had told Mike Gundy last week, you're going to run for 213 yards and keep the ball for 41 minutes, man, they would have been chalking well, this thing up as I a win. He saw that his team sacrificed its passing game to a certain degree to establish the run. Yep. Killed a lot Lies, of clock. I think. Yes. Killed a lot of clock. You got to keep the Baylor offense off the field. You know, when they when Baylor was on the field, what did it take them two to three minutes to get their touchdowns? Yeah, it doesn't take That's all. the problem. To go you got to keep them off the touchdown. field. Sure. Uh, Justice Hill. You try to figure out what kind of game did this kid have? He's a freshman, true freshman. He's probably the best running back on this team. You give him the football. He has a nice game. Unfortunately for him, he fumbles twice. One at the one yard line, which. At first, because I was on the field, a lot of folks, they didn't think it was a fumble, took the TV replay to show us, and I'm still wondering whether it the ball was. It was, and out. it was loose. so close. It was a right. fraction of a second before his elbow landed that the ball started coming loose. And man, you wish he could have learned this lesson against Southeast Louisiana or Central Michigan right. or maybe even Pittsburgh. But to learn this lesson mm -hmm. that as a freshman, you cannot ever, 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 ever fumble man it's tough that it happened last night because you're right I mean he played a whale of a game way over 100 yards by the time it was over uh, the team ran for 213 Justice Hill is the future and the present for OSU running the football uh, did you ever see the movie the program when uh, the young talented kid uh, fumbles the ball and so you know his punishment he's got to carry it with him to every single class uh, all week I long and so all of his one. teammates are trying to strip I the saw ball from and so you know what I mean. I, I think Justice like, Hill. I saw that on Twitter from somebody last night. He's going to be carrying the football to class. Is it kind of like the the Kurt Russell uh, uh, Robin Williams movie where Robin Williams drops the football in high in the high school game? Redo it. and they have an old timers Are we, we game. Play this ball game in eighteen years. years? Uh, all right. Uh, Justice Hill's got a bright bright future, but no doubt that fumble was the biggest play of the ball game. All right, Mr. Aaron, what do we have? 
Not a lot, but but Tyler kind of wants to stick one at you there, Big Alley. Me? Okay. Mm-hmm. He wants to know about them Cowboys up big at the half. Obviously, he knows you're a Giants fan. Ouch. This is Tyler Deaton, by the way. I wasn't going to bring that up. I, I don't get So what? They're beating the worst team in football. <laughs> yes. What's that? <laughs> big deal. If, if you stay with us to the end of this game, either you are a very, very big fan of our newscast, Corey Duke, yeah. Brandon, uh, or, I mean, you're like the biggest Cowboy fan imaginable. I mean, right. if you're going to stay up until I, I whatever just, it is, 11 what p.m. I'm to watch this. I mean, this is ugly. Here is what I'm waiting for. Come Thanksgiving. And the Cowboys are like seven and three. And Tony Romo was healthy. Comes back. Is that what, who's going to be the quarterback? Is that what you're forecasting? Are you well, asking me? No. Who do you Tony think? Tony Romo. Be the, okay. You don't think there are people? Uh, I don't know. A few okay. more weeks of this Dak Driving, Prescott fella, though. Maybe okay. I'll, he's Today, been good. He's been really back good. Driving back from Waco this morning, we stopped at a, you know, one of the quick trips yep. in, in Dallas. I get out. I see a big, big old dude with a Dak Prescott Yes, jersey on. you do. And I asked, that, off the shelf, I asked baby. that very question. I asked that very question. He's already got to be Dak. It's got to be Dak. <laughs> it's got to be Dak. So I'm waiting for that controversy to unfold. It's coming. It's coming. Uh, look, the kid's good. I mean, but you're right. Beating the Bears shows us nothing. But it was pretty impressive last week against Washington. And they were only a point. They're a point away from being 3-0. and I'm already giving them the win right. tonight. And there's there's a Cousins interception away from being yep. one and two. What what do you think of OSU now going forward? What what kind of final record do you I, now I think, think that they feel good, good about their running game, and I think they feel good for the most part about their defense. Uh, their big play, vulnerable. It looked like that, obviously. There's the here's guy here's the, the fan getting all over Gundy, and um, what was if he you, telling him? If, that's on you. It's on you. That's on you. All right. So if you see this gentleman. <laughs> yeah. Sitting at any OSU game, Let him know channel two. make sure no, make sure you go to a different section, okay? Because <laughs> that's how you make a fool of yourself. You think they're right about there. an eight and four team, or is yes. this maybe seven eight and five? And, no, eight yeah. and four. So they, I mean, they got to beat Texas this week to go eight and four, wouldn't you think? This yes, game, but I also think now becomes just monumental. But I also think that six and three can at least get a tie to you win the conference. You might be right. Yeah, you might be right. So you think crazy. still a conference title contender. It, it, this isn't uh, – Yeah, one game. Yeah, uh, I thought, yeah, sure. okay, here, Baylor, everybody thought the world of Baylor. I thought OSU could have won this football game Are you game with me? You actually road. feel a little bit better about them after last night than you did before? Yes, yeah, yes I do. The running game. Yes. Although they, they, I think they have to find a better way to get Washington open when they're going to concentrate on him. Sure. Uh, I was surprised. Seals didn't make much of a, a – uh, wasn't much of a right. factor in the game. I'm still waiting for Dylan Stoner to get a pass thrown to him. Um, he got the one jet sweep late, and that was ill-advised. That, yes, um, it, it lost five yeah, yards. Yeah, that's uh, right. Not good. Hey, uh, I guess maybe they've cleaned up the running game, or it's trending that way, so maybe they don't well, need a new offensive line coach. But if they did, oh, Les Miles is available. <laughs> <laughs> Les you know, Miles I wish I could sit here and say, you know, I, could, I saw this happening. But we've been saying this for what four years yeah, now. It's, it's been a while. It's been a while since, yeah. and, and less is toast. Since he won the national. So title he's going to have to find a different, difference of some different sod to chew on. Won seventy-seven percent of his games in twelve years. Won a national title for him. Recruited like the Dickens, but he's done. And I look, that offense was so bad uh, the last few years. Can't find a quarterback. Way too conservative. That, that's the amazing part. That is the amazing part to me is how, you, how LSU cannot find an SEC-worthy quarterback. No sense. With all the talent in Texas, Louisiana, and the Southeast, how that school yeah. cannot find and that's, a quarterback. That's why he's And that's on less. Today. That yeah. is on right. less. Yeah. No, he, you can play all the hard-nosed football you want. Come up with a quarterback that can lead a team They've, they've won championships. Lead a forward with, pass. A lot of that is the offense. I, I, obviously, he's not finding quarterbacks, no doubt. No argument there, but I think the offense also could help those quarterbacks you, a little bit Do we not more. have one of the – do they not have a running back who before the season – was a serious contender for a Heisman Trophy? Before the season, yes. Yes, before the, <laughs> the season. The most talented running okay. back in the country, no doubt. And it's being squandered. Right. And so now Fournette is going to protect his body so he can go pro. So LSU's toast. You know who's not squandering offensive talent? It's like I wrote these segues. We didn't. But you know who's not? Do we have anything? Uh, well, yeah, I was going to say just real quick. So Brian P. Dorner, sorry if I mispronounced your name, Brian. He says he, he's got a last mile's next gig. He's the next Corso. Oh, Ooh. he would be interesting on television. Yep. 
coach. I, I, I assume think he'll be he wants to continue it. to coach, and somebody will give him the opportunity. But I bet you for the Tomorrow rest of this we'll year, ESPN's going to – I bet he does ESPN work before this year's yeah. up. Uh, now, yeah, tell us some Les Miles story. I mean, he well, was fascinating for a media guy covering him. Well, the only thing that I remember when Les, we were in, the, in Gallagher Iba Arena's yeah. lobby. Yes. And his kids were playing ice hockey or, uh-huh. or sock hockey in the lobby. And he said, my kids think they're mops. <laughs> you know, just like <laughs> that. Just, just like talked, he would speak. Talked yeah. unlike anyone we've ever heard. He's just he's well, a very but, interesting But the fellow. most famous quote he had is, this Saturday, we're, we are told we're playing number one. And this week we'll find out which one is which. <laughs> that was good. Uh, yeah, he'll so probably be on toast. ESPN. I don't know that it'll be great because he is so odd. It could, uh, to me, it's he either going to fail spectacularly or just be incredibly tall, successful. Tall hat. He's going to. He's got to wear the tall hat. Right. He's, he's the hat. Uh, where are we going? Tu. They do not squander talent offensively. Down 31 nothing against Fresno State yesterday, and there was just way too much time on the clock for those Bulldogs. Here's, a, here's another beauty. We're in the press box at Baylor during the lightning delay, and we're watching TU, and I'm watching it with Bill Haston of yep. Tulsa World, and his lock of the week was Tulsa. Really? So he's wow. going nuts he's go, when it's yeah. 31 nothing. Uh-huh. He takes that lock seriously. Yeah, he did. <laughs> so Tulsa's down 31 nothing. So, you know, what are you going to do with that? Uh-huh. You swallow down your media meal, and then you go from there. Well, they and didn't then... do a thing right. <laughs> Offense, defense, special teams for the first well, 20 did... minutes of this game, they were atrocious. All right, so the next thing we know, we think the game's over at 31 nothing. The next thing we know is 31-21 at the half. Yes. So this is how that happened. Well, look, it, give the defense a lot of credit because it was actually the offense. Whoa, 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 whoa. It was 31 nothing. Yes, right. But give the defense was, credit was for what? The, the offense was actually playing worse than the defense in the first okay. 20 minutes of this. Hard to believe. You would have had to see it. But it, look, the offense was a three and out or fumbling the ball. Fresno hit him with a, you know, a couple of trick things. Um, and then the defense really settled in. They started getting three and outs, and that's how the offense was able to rally so quickly. If Fresno had been able to pick up a few first downs, they could have milked the clock, gone in with a 31-7 or 31-14 lead. But the fact that T.U. got the three touchdowns before the half, and then you look up, hey, we're only down 10. Uh, look, there was great poise, and then they still had to finish this thing off in overtime. The missed kick okay, in yes. the first overtime. So then we watched then the, the second great call there, Dane Evans, the right. 18-yard touchdown. Yeah, but we, for, we forgot to go to the first – uh, overtime. Yes, TU gets the, it was ugly. TU gets, gets the, the defensive first turnover, stop. so all they had to do was kick a field goal to win it, and they get one yard and three downs. A little too conservative, maybe. Uh, look, they ran the ball well. D'Angelo Brewer, 252 yards. Uh, I love this Baylor offense. So I've said it before the, on this show. If you're not running the Baylor offense, why aren't you running the Baylor offense? So I, I think it's fantastic. Uh, look, Brubaker I think there's some down? magic to this team. I know that, I mean, a win at Fresno State's terrible. So a win at Fresno State is not some sort of season maker. But in the fashion but I they think did at it. the end of the year, we may look back and look at this as one of those moments where this team just kind of showed it's got a little more gr- biggest grit, a little ever, more right? guts. That, yeah, biggest comeback in TU history. A little more than other teams. I, I think they're going to have a really nice year. I said 8-4 and four before the season started. I, I may think better. I, it may be 9-3. and three. I like these guys. I'm sticking with 7-5. and five. Uh what was the biggest comeback in college football history? Do we know? I don't know. Was it, was it Texas Tech versus Minnesota in that bowl game? How much was that? 38? I'm trying to remember. It was like 49 to 7 it at the half. Be. That's worth looking up. Uh, you can't get much bigger than 31. Miami, I would Miami think. came back and won a, uh, after being down big time. I'm trying so. to remember when that was. Yep. But anyway, all right. Anything? Let's talk about OU real quick. Okay. They're out of the top 25. They didn't even they're, play. They're, they didn't even play. They're out of the top 25. They're facing right. TCU. They could be one and three. Quite a few comments here on, well, our, on our comment go- thread. Right. Tur- Turpin's going to be missed for TCU. Yeah. But I still think it's going to be a, ch- uh, a chore for OU to get no that doubt. victory. Uh, Gary Patterson's fantastic. We saw last year with this third string quarterback. Was it second or third? Either way, a backup quarterback. I mean, they, gave, they were a two-point conversion away from beating OU in Norman. Um, I, I think it is a crossroads game for the Sooners, not just for the season, but, man, you lose this thing and it starts getting really ugly for both Bob and Mike, it, just the way fans regard this program at the moment. Lincoln Riley, uh, no longer, a, you know. Uh, I, look, I said it last week, I say it again. It's going to cost OU $25 million to clean house. Yeah, I don't think that's happening. I'm talking about in the court of public opinion. So I'm not talking about something concrete that's going to happen. I'm talking about 
court of public opinion, how Sooner fans feel about this program. People are going to wonder. You've got to win this ball game. People are going to wonder if Stoops has lost his touch. No doubt. As if they're not thinking I that I think they're already. already thinking that, yeah. All right, quickly before we go, we want to talk about what other thing? Yeah, the, well, the, uh, the let, let's let's show Lippie you the Marson. very best catch we have seen oh, on a Friday night the all catch. year long. This uh, is D. Wayne Cooks out of Booker T. Washington. Jeremy, our photog, got this. Look Whoa! Back. I wish Beckham would have made that catch today. Handed wow. one hand. I mean, that is, <laughs> yeah, standing O right there. That's the play of the year for us. Uh, and uh, your guy, Trey Lippy Morrison. Can, we, can we roll to the boxing now? Yeah, your guy, uh, Trey Lippy Morrison. My man, Miami. who looks uh, like he's, he's, he's a lot weight. trimmer. He looks uh, like a boxer, man. Oh, the baby man. fat is gone. Absolutely. And he actually fought somebody yeah, worth a darn. Yeah, he was last, taking on a guy who was also weekend. undefeated. And, I mean, he just took it to him. This Look last at a him of punch. <laughs> Love Ooh. it. Uh, I mean, what the heavyweight division is so down. Hey, you never know. He might. I and, look. And as as much as I, as I know that he he's into it because of his uh, of his dad. Yes. Uh, that's going to help him get some rating. Points. Oh, no doubt, no so. doubt. He's gonna get he's gonna get and look at Tony Roach. I mean, the reaction here to me. Look at Tony much. Holden. And look at Tony. Tony Holden. Oh man. He can't believe it. Freddie Roach. I'm he sorry. loves it. Uh, I, to me, that reaction shows that well, I mean, what? he executed exactly what they wanted, and they feel really good. This was a step forward, Tony, without a doubt. Tony was, and rightfully so, very nervous fired before up. this fight. Is that right? Yes, he was extremely nervous because this was the first fight that he really he fought a, he didn't fight a palooka. A tomato can, yeah. And this tomato. was on Showtime. Is he just going to continue to fight there in Miami? No, I, well, if Showtime or? and HBO and those guys are willing to come down. to Miami, why oh, not? Yeah. Might as well do it near his hometown. We're to it. Um, yeah, you've been on this story from the very start. and uh, Love the guy. We're, in, we're enjoying watching Yeah, he's a nice kid, too. Really nice guy. All right, that wraps it up. They are back at it in just a few seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I looked over there, and they're in a commercial. They're in a commercial. <laughs> Close enough. Right, at, do we they're have anything else? back at no, it. No, that's, pre that's, that's pretty much it. You guys nailed it. All right. Um... Again, uh, Arnold Palmer. Yeah. Uh, a tremendous. Do you have a favorite mem moment or memory? I mean, obviously, he won the seven majors. I, I just love the fact that he was the people's golfer. Yeah. You know, yeah. And I mean, embraced Obviously, it. he had some great moments, some great highlights. But when you take a look at the video here, uh, his swing wasn't perfecto. Look at these galleries. But, yeah, he. he I love it. Uh, he wasn't an elitist. Yep. He would sit there and talk to you over a beer, sure. that kind of thing. That's, the, that's Phil, what I remember. Phil Mickelson's kind of the closest thing modern day, uh, but doesn't touch, mm -hmm. you know, he, how much people loved Arnie. I love And he the, smoked the cigarettes, cigarette. too. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I mean, you were supposed to. Nobody, let me tell nobody you was a pitch man like Arnie, not well, just for golf, but for all sports. Well, like, he changed the way athletes Selling oil here, were, tractors, absolutely. the whole he nine yards. the way athletes were yeah. marketed. You know. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, Arnold Palmer would, would uh, endorse cigarettes. Mickey Mantle endorsed cigarettes. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, Joe DiMaggio smoked like a, like a chimney. You know, I so know it was, it was but a lot of people thought that smoking was okay for you. Yeah. Uh, and how we found out that it's, well, not. Not, not so much. All right. They're, they are back <laughs> at it. Now they're back at they're it. They're back at it. So that's it for another rant. We'll see you next week. Enjoy the football. We have some Big 12 great games coming up this week. TU has the weekend off and more high school, of course. So have a great week, everybody. Big Al's Rant with Caden McFarland, powered by Jack Cassie Ford.